Welcome to the video working with segments inside of Dynamics 365 marketing as part of the broader workshop of marketing in a day. My name is Craig Kreskis. I am a cloud solution architect here at Microsoft. I want to thank you so much for joining. Uh, this is a section or a video focused on segments. So as you can see here, this is a broader workshop available for partners to attend at any point they want. All these sections will be recorded and available to you. It's also designed to be a hands-on workshop. Uh, I have an introduction video I provided earlier. You can provision a trial of Dynamics 365 Marketing and kind of follow along using the same exact demo data and experiences that I've put forth in these videos. So let's get started with segments. So creating segments, uh, this is the primary role of, of marketing segments is to create a collection of records or related contacts that you can target by using in customer journeys. Now you'll see uh, as we establish these segments, they're a group of related contacts that we target in our marketing initiatives. Now how I'm gonna work through this video is we'll start with just reviewing some of the fundamentals, some of the basics. I want to show just some examples and then we'll go ahead and hands-on create uh, segments in your demo environment. So in terms of the basics, you know, building segments is about accessing the customer data that marketers already have available. And Dynamics 365 Marketing gives those marketers the ability to target uh, customer data on either behavioral or profile data. Now there are two types, either a dynamic or static. Dynamic meaning as I add uh, individuals, contacts, leads to my application, if they fit that certain criteria, they'll automatically or dynamically be added into that segment and thus depending on the journeys could follow suit in those journeys. We can also create static lists or static segments. A real simple way to think about this is just, it's your audience, it's who we're targeting, it's a group of characteristics. And then at the end of the day, it's important for you as a pre-sales engineer to understand it's germane to the success of all of marketing. Now, again, as I mentioned, the type of segments that you'll create uh, dynamic. So a real good example you can see on the screen here, and this will be the first exercise we'll do in the workshop, is to create a logical expression uh, to group contacts in this scenario where all of the contacts that we have who are from the state of New York. Or maybe you want to have a segment based on all of our contacts where their birthdays are in June. Maybe we are doing a campaign around birthdays. You can always create a static snapshot of those lists. You know, as an example I've seen here used internally when we've used marketing is we have a, uh, a finite set of stakeholders interested in the success of the launch of a product. And so using static lists to ensure that everyone is up to speed. Behavioral blocks, pretty straightforward. As a contact performs some behavior, they submitted a form on your website, they registered for an event, they registered but didn't attend, or they attended an event, uh, they clicked on a link, whatever it might be, just think of it as the behaviors they perform are how we're targeting those individuals. And then profile block is just using the data or the entities that we typically work with inside of Dynamics 365. Some examples, and this is from an older uh, environment I would use in some of my earlier workshops. Uh, you could see here on the screen, it's, uh, you can see I have uh, behavioral segments. So anyone who clicked on an email, maybe in a particular time period, or they click, clicked on an email to create a trial. And then you can also see here, I was uh, using this as a recruitment effort to target some of our business central and our customer engagement partners. And thus I had different characteristics such as the title, because I knew if we were recruiting partners, the message or the initiative or the journey that I would have an owner follow would be different than say, for example, somebody who might be in a technical consultant role. 
then you can see here if I were to look at some of my existing, these are the con the segments I've been creating here as part of the workshop and then the recording. If I were to open up the contacts here, you can see that uh, you can the contact the consent's been given. It's all of my contacts that are in Denver, in Denver, but not including, let's say for example, this organization who might be one of our competitors. So you can use the uh, conjunctions here to determine which definitions you want to build into your segments. And then as a separate tab, I've got members. Uh, I'll show a little bit of a compare and contrast in certain sections of the application. But here inside of outbound marketing, which as you can see at the bottom left corner of the screen I'm in, uh, members are separate from the inside. So I can see all of the members I've got 148 of them, and then on the insights, I can see those members over time. Okay, so that's just kind of an overview and some examples of segments. I'm sure you've got some examples that you uncovered during your discovery or opportunities that you're pursuing. Let's go ahead and start to create segments and start to build out our demo database. And I'm going to begin inside of real-time marketing. So again, I'll draw your attention and to the bottom left corner as the products, uh, I should say products, as the product continues to mature, uh, these areas will eventually dissipate and it'll just be one core product. Uh, so if you don't mind, again, I'll, I will reference on occasion the difference between outbound and real-time marketing. In real-time marketing, I want you to select on segments. It's over under audience. And here, again, you notice that inside of our trial, we're not, in, we're not including any predefined segments. You need to build those. So I'll begin by clicking on a new segment. Now, in this current release, at the time of this recording, uh, all I need to do is essentially type in the name of my segment and marketing it will have the intelligence to provide me with the tools necessary to create that. So for example, and as I mentioned in the intro video, we're gonna start out by just using uh, a very basic characteristic of all of my contacts in the state of Colorado. So I'm naming the segment. I can select my target audience. So this could either be contact, could be lead, or if I have customer insights, it could be my customer insights. Uh, targeted audiences as well, but I don't have that tied to this particular instance, and thus I want to then provide a description. So I've got contacts in Colorado, and the description is going to be all of my contacts who live in Colorado. Go ahead and create that. So on the right side, as you can see here, the intelligence of the application sees what I'm typing and says, as a result, the state is equal to CO, the abbreviation for Colorado. Do I want to use it? And I can always provide feedback on the suggested query, but I'll select use. And now you'll see I've got in my first group, the state province is equal to or is Colorado. And now on the right pane in the segment builder, I can search for attributes to add to the canvas. So here you can see, again, all of the fields that I'm already familiar with in Dynamics 365, I can drag and drop or insert either as a new group to do and or, uh, or I'll also have it as a subgroup. Continuing down the, the refinement, if you will, I can include or exclude members of a particular segment. So for example, uh, maybe Amy Alberts is somebody, while she happens to be inside of Colorado, is not somebody I want to include in this segment for whatever reason. So I can hand pick individuals to include or exclude. On the right side, I can hit the query assist. You'll see from the drop down my previous queries that I have used, as well as any suggestions that the system or the application might be providing. Under the settings, this is what I mentioned earlier. I can use uh, either the dynamic refresh. So again, as I add members into the application, into this database, and they have fit these characteristics, they'll be dynamically added. But I can also, for again, depending on the purposes of the marketer, create a static snapshot. So I can just take a fixed snapshot of these individuals and use those for specific journeys. Hit save, and then you need to select ready to use. 
once you're ready to use this in your journeys. Now, one of the things I wanted to compare and contrast, you'll notice here inside of real-time marketing, the members and insights has been joined or combined. Thus, I have a single click to see all of the members in this list. And then also, again, as the segment builds, I can select the filter of the date range and it just makes it easier for marketers to understand who is inside of those segments. And that's a very simple and easy way for you to create a dynamic segment inside of real-time marketing. Now, just because we have access to it, uh, I wanted to make sure you can compare and contrast as pre-sales individuals, the difference between uh, real-time and outbound marketing. So let's take a look at what it takes to create a dynamic segment inside of outbound marketing. I'll begin here on the left side. So again, make sure that you do switch areas. You'll notice in the bottom left, I am in outbound marketing. You also see here at the top, it says I'm in outbound marketing. Select on segments. Now I will select on new and you have a choice. You can either select new dynamic or a new static. I'll select on dynamic. And what's great is you have the luxury of taking advantage of the templates that come shipped with marketing. So I can have a baseline to start with my segments. Maybe I want to create a segment on all of the contacts who created or clicked on an email or you know their birthday is today or a basic interaction, whatever it might be. And again, I encourage you to, to go through the list to see which ones make the most sense. I'm going to select the uh, basic profile segment and I'm going to name this uh, contacts in Denver. So instead of going to Colorado at the state level, I'm going to create a segment from a, a city level. So who would I like in the segment? Again, I just have to type in my contacts in Denver. I select return or the right arrow. And now notice again, you get the, the same feedback results of I want to thumb up or thumbs down and then it builds that query. So again, just using natural language. So as a marketer, all I have to tell the system what I want and it'll generate the results. I select save and then instead of ready to use, we just say go live. As I mentioned, you've got the members here at, at the top and then inside separate. Now, if you switch your area page, so if you come down here at the bottom and you switch on your area and I want you to select on real-time marketing, Notice that whatever you're creating in one area, specifically in outbound marketing, it does get shared inside of real time. So for example, that segment I just created, contacts in Denver, the source was coming from outbound marketing. Next, we'll go ahead and create uh, two more segments just so you can get a feeling for some of the flexibility and the breadth and power of segment building. This time we're going to create one from our leads. So inside of real-time marketing up at the ribbon, I'll select new segment. You've seen this before. Go ahead and type in qualifying lead. Again, I can either switch between contact or lead. This is going to change, of course, the tables in which I have access to. Same thing, I'm gonna hit segment description here, follow up on leads, and then I'll select create. So now I've got a qualifying lead, and now inside of those leads, again, I have much different attributes as a lead versus a contact. I'm gonna follow up on or search on those that I've scheduled for follow up. So I could do a search on those attributes. I don't have to go through all 190 attributes. And then go ahead and select, or you could switch here, maybe there's an actual date versus a relative date. I'm going to choose the relative date, which is a timeout in the future. And then I'll choose 14 days from today. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I have created a, yet another segment, this time based on our leads inside of marketing. Now let's build upon that. I want to do one more complex segment not only based on leads, but maybe based on the industry from where that lead is coming from. And so again, as marketers, we get more refined with who our target audiences are gonna be. So here I am back in that qualifying lead segment. And now you'll notice here, without having to call IT, without needing to do anything further than just selecting add a table, I wanna find a related table. 
In this case, I'm looking for the account table. So I have a lead at the account. I'm going to go ahead and add that to my list. And then as this is syncing, I can expand the account. And then again, you can see all of the entities or attributes inside of the table for account. Now I'm going to go ahead and search on that industry. And so you can drag and drop, add it to your existing group. And I'm going to go ahead and set this at the parent level. So I set the path here. And now my industry, which I'm tracking at the account level, is equal to, and then you choose what the industry might be. I chose financial. So again, maybe we're targeting uh, that in our current campaigns. Once again, I'll hit save. When you're ready, you can go ahead and hit ready to use. So in this video, I wanted to make sure you all understood the fundamentals of segments. We took a look at some examples that I had in previous workshops, but then you were able to follow along and create a couple of different segments. We created two dynamic segments, one in real-time marketing, one in outbound. Then you created a one based on lead, and then we added the industry to that particular segment. So that wraps up this video. I want to thank you so much for your time, your attention. Uh, again, more videos to come in this series around marketing in a day. And if you are interested in learning more about some of the live events upcoming in the U.S., I've provided a link at the bottom left corner. I want to thank you all so much for the investment, and I look forward to seeing you in a video real soon.